Hello again, and welcome to another installment of our client portal series on WordPress here. Let's just dive into it, and I will talk to you about what we're gonna be doing here in today's portion. Uh, real quick recap of what we did last time. If you're looking at the playlist, or if you go to wpclientportal.co, you can just go to the uh, YouTube playlist and see everything there. The last thing that we did was we worked on creating the custom post types and the relations that we are using in this client portal. Now, I'm gonna be completely 100% honest with you. Moving forward, there's going to be, I'm gonna to try to make it as concise as possible with the things that we're doing and like in the videos and the, the different parts and sections we're doing. But a lot of the stuff moving forward now that we moved out of the planning and out of the initial build, we are gonna be doing it still piece by piece. But in my mind, there's gonna be a lot of overlap, a lot of different things that we're doing kind of at uh, similar times. We're gonna be bouncing back and forth because we're gonna to have to be doing a lot of the actual you know, development now. We're going to be building pages. Not only are we going to be building them, though, we're going to have to need, go back and, you know, put in sample data, make sure everything's, you know, related properly and everything like that. There's a lot to do uh, in order to make it kind of come together. A lot of, like, conditions and, uh, you know, kind of dynamic visibility that's going to go on. So, so people that are, you know, so client A only sees the things that are associated with them. But that being said, in the chapters below, I'm going to do my best to outline what we're covering at any given time. And uh, let's just dive into it, shall we? So we're on the login screen here that we've that we've created just as a minimum viable product. So let's go ahead and log in here and uh, get to work. So we got our successfully logged in message. It all automatically redirects us to the dashboard, and you can see some interesting things that I've been playing around with here on the tasks section of this. I was trying to get that uh, prepared for you guys uh, before, but we'll get rid of that stuff and we'll and we'll keep going here. All right, so like I said, this is going to be very kind of stream of consciousness thinking of like what we should do next and kind of how we're going to move forward. The first thing that I like to do because it kind of makes the most sense and is the most, again, the most straightforward in a way is we're going to, because websites is our key custom post type, we're going to create a websites page. And it's not really actually going to be a page. It's going to be the archive for websites. So the best the best way to do that is if we go to Bricks and we go down to, um, we create a new uh, a new template in Bricks, and then we'll say uh, archive, or we'll do we'll do websites, and then archive. And what we want to do here is I'm actually going to put a space in there, and then let's go over to template, and let's go down to archive. So all we're doing here, again, if you're not familiar, is we're adding a template in Bricks. So it's going to be the website archive. We've got to give it a name, and we got to say that it's going to be an archive, and then we'll publish it, and then we'll edit with Bricks. Now, again, this isn't a page. This is an archive. So it's going to, by default in the WordPress system, it would show all of the websites. Obviously, that's not where we're going to work because we have to actually build the thing to make it look like that. Um, but that is that is the idea. Think of this as the page that you would see all of the websites in. So let's just add a section here. And again, if you're not familiar with Bricks, um, you know I could probably make some more tutorials, but there's a lot of really good ones out there. And I also want to preface this by saying I am not a Bricks expert. I just think that I'm okay at developing in Bricks. So some of the best practice. Do not shoot me if there are if I don't adhere to every single best practice. The other thing is we're doing this kind of like as we go. So I want to make sure that we get all of the ideas down. And you're probably not going to build your portal exactly like this. So I just want to make sure that we get we cover a lot of the basis. Then we can always come back and style things and clean things up. Um, but I would obviously recommend to make sure you're using BIM and all that sort of stuff. And I'll try to use that as much as possible. But um, let's just kind of think. We're also operating kind of without a, an, a, stri a strict idea, which I don't really recommend, like the a design and everything. I do have a little bit that we could kind of operate off of over here for um, you know, the old portal, if we wanted to go that route, we could come in and we can go to websites and we can kind of, you know, use this as a template. But again, your design is going to differ from mine, like a hundred percent. So we want to make sure that, uh, you know, we're getting the, the, all of the logic and kind of that I feel like is, uh, is really the main thing that I want to cover. So, but that being said, we'll try to just design something like this. So what this would be is this is kind of a loop item in a way, in my mind. So there would be a grid here. And then this is a this is one big loop item, and there's more loops and everything like that going on there, more queries. But the, at its core, this is going to be our block, and then we're going to have you know other blocks and things like that in here. But like all this data is pulling pulled dynamically from the websites, uh, you know, from the website custom post type that we're that we're creating here. So let's just try to go over here, and we have section container. We're going to need another. We're definitely going to need a block because this. We'll probably have a, a, you know, like some sort of heading with websites and stuff like that, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I really would actually love to use uh, components 
but we don't have dynamic components yet. I think that's going to really change the, the um, I don't want to say the header, but like the hero sections of websites. I feel like I'm going to use a dynamic component almost every single time I do a, a hero section from now on, even if it's a simple one, just with like a post title and a, um, and a, and a subtext line or something. Because again, what I'm talking about is something like this. If this is on all of your archives, all of your pages, you don't want to have to style that independently. So we don't have that yet where we can have a, uh, you know, a, a dynamic template. We can, we can do something else that, uh, that we'll, that we'll play around here in a second, but okay. So let's think about this. We have a section, we have a container. If we're using this as the example, we definitely need a, a block in here. So we'll throw, throw a block in and did that go in the right spot? Yeah, cool. So that's going to be our actual, um, that is going to be our, we'll have this container be our, our grid, I would say, which is not really going to be a grid. It's probably going to be more like a, you know, vertical list, but grid is fine. Our block is going to be our, um, I would say like website uh, card, I guess, I guess we could call it. And then within the website card, we're going to have definitely some more, some more blocks because if we try to do this, then this would probably be a block. And then we'd have this as a block. And I'm not, again, I'm not 100% sold on this design, but we got to make sure that we have kind of something going on there at least. So let's do two blocks. And for the first block here, we'll do a, we'll do an image, and we will do. Let's see what else we got. We'll do a heading. Um, probably gonna be a heading. Probably be like an H2, right? Because we have an H1 up at the top, an H2 there. And what else do we have here? Too many tabs open. We could throw in the domain name. I like throwing in the domain name there just because it's a nice little it's a nice little touch. So that could just be some text. Um, well, actually, we probably want it to be. Let's make it actually text link might work. Yeah, let's do a text link. Get rid of this because it's little. I, I wanted to, I wanted to you know link out to it. That I feel like that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, so let's fill in some of these things just so we have an idea of what we're doing here. And then we'll have to open another window and kind of see once we build the query so we get some some good data there as well. So this one is, this is our text link. So what do we want the content of the text link to be? We want it to be our websites and we want it to be our domain name. So our domain name will show up there whenever we're populating this. Our link to is going to be a dynamic data as well. And now this, we should be able to just use our domain name. If we have to play around with it, we can. We might have to put the protocol, but I, I don't think we'll have to, I don't think we'll have to do that. We would want it to open in a new tab. Okay. And uh, I'm gonna try to avoid, like I said, doing a lot of styling here, because I'm not trying to create like a bunch of classes and go th about that at this moment. I'm trying to just get the structure down uh, and uh, some of the dynamic stuff. And so for this heading here, we will go and say, which is post title. And for the image, we're going to go set a dynamic data. And we're going to say, if we scroll down again, the big list here of all these, uh, we want to go jet engine websites logo. Now it's probably, we're probably not going to want to make it large. Um, probably just, just again, medium. And we can kind of, again, play with some of those things, but I'm trying to not trying to avoid some of that stuff right now. The, uh, the styling, like I said, Okay, cool. So let's go and we'll do one more thing real quick. And let's say, um, let's do a card like this. Let's go or let's go back to our card here for a second, actually. And let's do use query loop, query loop, we're going to call it websites. Now we're also going to have to think about this because the first thing I want to do is just show you all the websites. But the next thing I'm going to do is obviously make it so it's only the people that are logged in, right? So that's the first object there is to do that. And I like to go just like a big number there just so we can kind of see them all and just get an idea for what we're doing here. And then the other thing that we we have not done and we're, it's not going to work unless we do it is that we have to go to our template settings and we have to add a condition. Now, obviously there's, there's, there's sometimes you can have the, uh, if you haven't switched it off, there might be like default settings where like if you make a header, it just kind of knows that it goes to the header. But a lot of times I just like to make sure that's set. So what we're doing here is we're just saying like, use this template on specifically the archive for post type websites. And that should work. All right, cool. 
Uh, so next thing we want to do here is I'm going to go out to our website here and I'm going to say slash websites. All right, cool. So now we have two websites. Now look at that. Now what that is, what that's ultimately doing here is it's just, again, querying all the websites in. And it would be, you know, like a, I don't know if we went back in here and we said website card. Again, I don't really want to, uh, I don't necessarily want to do this, but we'll do, um, uh, we'll say websites. I'm terrible at naming classes. Absolutely atrocious at naming classes. We'll say websites, we'll say grid, website card, uh, block, we'll say um, uh, wrapper, but more like, I don't know, like, I don't, I literally don't know. I just watch Kevin Geary name classes and he's like so proficient at it and I'm not sure what the hell I'm doing most of the time. Yeah, just title's good. And then we'll do uh, domain name. Cool. And then our block over here would be what we would actually do here is over on this, it's really going to be, you know, a two, a two column, like a grid two or something. And then the block would be, um, I guess like another wrapper, but it would probably be like in our, in our case, if we're trying to do that other thing, it'd be like a button wrapper basically. So like button or, um, like, I don't know, like again, whatever, whatever you would call this, let's just do buttons wrapper. Terrible, but okay. All right. So we got that. And then anything else that we're going to need? Obviously, we're going to need like a few buttons in there if we're going to do it like that. And let's think, let's actually stop for a second. What documents, because this is an older situation that's not going to necessarily be like this. What documents are we going to have for them to download in this section? If we go back, and again, this might depend on what you decided to do. If you go to website two, for instance, we have the logo, we have the domain name, we have uh, the title. That's kind of like the on the left side there on the right side we would pro you'd probably want them to be able to like just quickly right there click a link to upload files if you need to and then proposal and master service agreement would probably make sense to uh have quick downloads there so we'll say okay i got an idea all right we'll do this we'll do um why don't we do like actions wrapper or action wrapper let's do actions wrapper that sounds decent and then what we'll do is we will drop in a let's do a let's just do a bunch of buttons i guess so button button and button probably that's that would be upload uh and then download download that should be fine for now cool all right we don't need to necessarily tell them exactly what's going on we'll just say like um upload files up we'll just say upload project files or something May change a lot of this, like I said. Upload project files, download proposal, and we'll say let's just say upload files. Upload files, download proposal, and download master service service be type agreement. All right. All right, good enough. All right, now, if we go up here and we BIM this out, websites should all work. Seems like it works, cool. All right, so now we have now we have uh, classes on each one of these. So I feel better about styling these now. I feel like I'm not gonna get as much shit from everyone if I, if I style it now rather than at the ID level, which is, this is the way that you're supposed to do it. All right, so the first thing is website, website grid. If we're looking at the section as websites and then the container as the grid here, we want to make sure that this is probably going to be, and I'm again, I'm using automatic CSS for some of these things. So, you know, that auto BEM feature, that's automatic CSS. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to grab that. Um, but some, you, for instance, like you could come up here and you could add a, a utility class to this and you could say uh, grid, you could say, actually, I like saying auto grid to, um, auto grid to, so it automatically, you know, you can just boom. And then what AutoGrid does is that it knows as the screen is changing sizes. So when it gets smaller, it just automatically stacks them as opposed to like if you would just do grid too. Um, so that's a, that's a nice thing. Now, a quick, I'll give you a quick uh, automatic CSS lesson, but you should definitely watch Kevin Geary's content if you want more specific stuff there. What I kind of think is a better approach 
is if you click on your class that you made, like your custom class that you made, then you go to grid here, and then you say template columns, and you say like auto grid two down here, because from my understanding, that puts that variable, which is a C, which is an ACSS thing as well, but that puts the variable in your custom class rather than you having multiple classes on this on the thing. And then if, if you ever deleted that that cut that, that uh, utility class that we just looked at it just makes it kind of like messy so um so yeah i think that's that's probably uh, a better way to go there as far as that and then also in this in this we probably want to have well as we get down to the card things so that's that's good enough for now i mean template rows we definitely want it to be two columns like that and then i think as far as rows go um i think just just one, right? I'm not even necessarily sure if we need to set that 100% in this case, um, but that's that's fine. So, um, well, actually, 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 I am. We are doing this in the wrong spot. Yeah. So you're witnessing me make mistakes there. So that's good. Now this should still be our grid, because. But what we actually want to do is we want to come down here to. Uh, website card uh, a little bit of styling of the card here we want to make sure that our custom class is set and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, this auto grid class on our uh, website card here um, and then that's going to put make our stuff on the left hand side here to like our um, like our info and then our actions and then we could do a lot of different things here but just to be um, as easy as possible we will, um, let me do something here just because I want to create a little bit of separation and a little bit of, um, a little bit of something around this. Okay, so I'm going to go throw this solid on here. I'm going to give us a radius of, and again, this is a right click radius. I'm going to say, do, 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 let's do small and link all of those. Uh, and then while we're here, we'll just do like, trans 50 or something like that just so we have our you know we have this the, you know the something kind of moving in the right direction here, right if we go back up here to to our buttons real quick and we go to add and we go down to link we say dynamic link and we go to add this stuff dynamically we come to our file upload url if we go to download proposal we do the same thing we go to link we go to dynamic data we add our uh list is so long uh, we have our proposal link and then we have our master service agreement and we come down to dynamic data and we do the same thing master service agreement boom cool save that just as an example you can't click these right now we refresh the page and now we have our just it doesn't really go anywhere obviously but our upload files is two and one if you see at the very bottom of the screen super super tiny this is hashtag one because that's what we made that link just for now this is hashtag two so these are working appropriately as uh, as as we would expect um now this is an interesting is an interesting thing here so what we have and this might uh this might uh we might have to do something interesting here company two um this company two right here and this company one if you look at the bottom left they're not going to what would be company one.com and what would be company two.com uh which is quite intriguing how that how that works out so but i do want it to just show as the the domain name i think that is cleaner than seeing the protocol you know kind of like this is i mean you can see the protocol but it, it's I don't, I don't know i don't like it so my point in saying that is if we go down to our uh, domain name and we look at this so we have our domain name which is being populated we have our dynamic data which is the link but for some reason it's not doing it so I have never I haven't came across this issue yet in bricks but I'm gonna try something and this is why hopefully I love bricks because it gives you the option to kind of do something like this but this rendered as thing is really is really confusing me because normally it shows more stuff there but let's just take a look and see here and we'll learn together and okay uh, that looks like that's going to now go to uh you know the protocol slash 
Uh, now, I don't know if that's the best way to do that, but I mean, I think that's going to work. This isn't going to obviously go to anything, I would assume. Company two is whatever. But my point is that before it was trying to do some other stuff. Uh, it was trying to just like add that to a, uh, you know, as a, as a, uh, a slug of websites. So that is at least a solution there. And again, I just want to point this out, okay? Because if you're watching this and you've used Elementor or something in the past, the way that they handle their dynamic data is awful compared to this. The reason is because if you if you had a situation like this in Elementor, you could actually do maybe like a before and after. But in this case, in these fields, like all the dynamic data, when you click this button and you insert something, it just inserts like this variable or whatever, whatever, whatever they, whatever this is called, but I'll call it a variable just for lack of a better term right now. That, that is what it is. So I'm saying like you could have, you know, there's weird workarounds to get uh, two variables in like a text editor in Elementor and other things that, that doesn't work like this. I mean, they just put it in like that instead of like monopolizing that whole field in the builder for that one piece of dynamic content. I just love that. And if we had, and if we, you know, because of that, we're able to do things like this where, you know, I don't know, just uh, it seems like it works out and makes our life a little easier. So super happy about that. Uh, I want to try something real quick because this is starting to annoy me. I'm not exactly sure why these are not. Um, I'm also not sure why my contextual thing has just decided to not work. I'm not sure if we need something weird there, but let's try um, var. And then I think... Um, I don't know what it would be. It'd probably be like space M just as an example. And then that would be column gap on a, on a row. And then that would be that. See, like, I don't understand what's happening here because these should be, I feel like these should be working the the blocks. Uh, well, I don't know why it's saying var var. What is, what is, what is going on? Okay. I don't, I don't, is that a bug? I don't, I don't know what's going on there. I'm not sure what happened there. Maybe I could absolutely could have been doing that wrong, but I'm not I'm not exactly sure what was kind of going on there. Um, anyway, uh, the other thing here we could do actually is like content gap instead, which I think is probably a better bet. Um, and something like that, I suppose. I don't know. Again, styling is not uh, of the most the most pressing issue here. We're just trying to get the uh, the kind of the stuff going here. All right, this has been pretty basic to this point. Here's what we want to do next. I want to start trying to test things and try to start using some more um, like dynamic visibility data type type of thing here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say website three, and uh, we'll just add another uh, random logo. Which one haven't we used? Uh, this one. Cool. And then we'll say uh, website three actually website 3.com and we'll say hashtag three just to keep this all synonymous here also I'll leave these out and I'll show you how to do that how to not show those if for some reason you don't have a proposal or a master service agreement or one of these we'll take care of that too um, let's actually take care of that first but let's refresh this because we should have a third one beautiful okay again don't worry about the styling <laughs> Um, all right, so let's let's get into this. All right, so the first thing that I want to show you how to do though is if you don't have a like let's say like you know you don't have we're all we're gonna do is we're gonna show or hide these buttons based off of if there's something here here or here. So that's what we're gonna do. We only want to show an upload. Maybe for some projects you don't have a file upload thing, and if you don't have anything in this, that's how we're gonna trigger this to not show up. Um, which in this case, what we will do is just so we have something to test with. I'm gonna take that out of there so we don't have anything in three. We have a file upload link in one and two. We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it uh, so we can't see it in three dynamically. We're gonna to go to our button, our upload files button. Uh, I don't think we need to have the, the, the class on because we're doing some other stuff. Well, actually maybe conditions, conditions, and we're gonna say dynamic data, dynamic data here, and then if, our file upload button does not equal zero. This is really confusing coming from other things, but like it's this is when you show it. This is you're setting up the condition for when you show it. Doesn't say show or hide or anything like that. It would be nice if they kind of gave you that option, but it's it's what we're doing here is show anytime you write a condition, show if the file upload URL does not equal nothing. Very confusing. But 
if it doesn't equal nothing, which is double negative, then it equals something, and that's when we show it. So if we click Save, and we come back out here, now we don't have a button here. We see how we have three here, we have three here, we have this. So now I'll just, I'll give another example. We'll just throw this back in. Cool, update, bang, back here, button's coming back, cool. If we go back to, uh, real quick, just to show you one more time, we go back to website two, and we don't have a URL for that. Don't fill it in. Uh, and then, boom, now it's gone there. Easy peasy, dynamic data is lovely, right? Awesome. Let's do it for the other ones real quick. So we'll do um, download proposal, and we only want to see, we're going to see dynamic data. We want to see proposal only when it doesn't equal nothing. Now this one is different because it is a media field, but I am, we'll find out together. I'm almost certain it's going to work the exact same way. What do you know? It does. So um, on this first one now, we don't have a proposal, so it doesn't show us a proposal. We do have it in the other ones, so it does. Perfect. Now let's do it one more time over here on the old, uh, also the UI here is weird because you like close out of that. And I guess, yeah, the, the conditions are not obviously tied to CSS or anything like that, so you don't have to have that clicked. If we go down here to our master service agreement, we will do it one more time just so we cover all of our bases here. And you could do this with any type of element. It does not have to be a, a button, but uh, in our case, that's what we're using it for. And then obviously you can get more creative in other, in other cases, but this is one of the more straightforward ones. So boom, you hide it, and now we're not going to have one up here because we don't have any, we didn't upload any there. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so we have ran the gamut there on uh, on those pieces. And for things like text and such, you don't necessarily need to do that uh, because if you don't have text here, then you'll just kind of see like there just won't be anything there. But again, it depends on, on uh, how you design yours. But for buttons, that's pretty straightforward and that's what we got there. Okay, here is the next thing that I'm gonna do. And I'm gonna do it the same way that I did it on the other website. And what we're gonna do is we're going to clone we're going to duplicate this at first. We may make some adjustments, but the idea here is we're going to duplicate this section. The reason we're duplicating this section is because down here, our query is not going to change. What we're going to do down here is, and this is mostly for testing purposes, but you can leave it like this if you make some if you make some tweaks, and I'll, I'll explain. Down here, think of down here as, uh, actually, we'll, we'll just do this so we have an idea here. So like add, like um, we'll do, nope, I always pull the add, I always pull the post type, the post title thing, and they're thinking it's a heading. Let me do this, and down in this section here, which let's just put it right here. That's probably not semantically where we want to put this, but we don't need to we don't need to uh, fret about that. Actually, we'll just wrap it in a uh, we'll wrap it in a container just for for the heck of it. Um, well, we're, we're, well, I'm just putting this down here just so you know what I'm talking about. So like this is this will be like the like all websites. And this is like uh, all websites. And this is the, we'll call it the admin view. Okay. And we'll get, we're going to set one setting and we'll make it, we'll make it work. So this is the admin view, right? If you are the admin, you want to come into this website, you want to log into the portal. And if you're, if you're, it, it could be the admin view, but it, we don't, it, it could be like a team member view or something like that. Like this is all the websites. So the full super admin view, you're going to see that on the bottom. What we're going to do is we're going to contrast that with what we have at the top here. And our, we're going to change our query in order to make that happen. So all, what we want here is we want the we want the websites that are associated with the current user. That is what we want up here. That's what we're trying to query. We're not trying to query other websites. We're just trying to query the websites with the, associated with the current user. So here's the thing. I'm going to be 100% honest with you. As of recording this in February of 2024, I do not understand how... Bricks handles these relations within Jet Engine because if you if you were if we are looking at this top this top grid right this website card loop right uh, for just the websites that we want you know related to the users that's all we want to see related to this specific user if you click into here and we've already created our relations right there's one Jet Engine relation that kind of seems to make sense which is our websites to users because that's the one that we want maybe the way that i set it up doesn't make sense for the way that bricks wants to handle it i'm not blaming bricks i'm just saying that i don't really understand how it works and then so that that seems out of the table out of the question because if you click that then you then you uh implement that then you get in this case what we should see at the top here is just website one and two 
and I'll show you why in a second, but that's what we should see, okay? But we see this other situation. The reason we need to see website one and two is there's a, there's a cool little trick here, is if you go to your user, like whatever user you wanna look at, because you've made this relation, the way the Jet Engine puts it is like parent websites, and it puts it in here, right? Now, I do wanna say that maybe if it was the other way around, if users were the parent, and websites were the child, maybe that would appease Jet Engine or appease Bricks and would put it in there. But my point is, we're looking for website one and two. Until we have website one and two in this section, we know that our query is not right. I honestly do not know how to do it with 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 Bricks. Sometimes it works if it's set up perfectly, but other times I just don't think that the, the it doesn't give you enough settings. I don't I don't really know what's going on. So we're, I'm not going to use this because I have no idea how to use that. Maybe if you wanna if you wanna figure it out and do it, put it in the comments, more than happy, that would be awesome, but I don't know. But we are gonna be able to do it. So the post type situation here, if we go back to posts and we look at our second option, we, maybe we want, okay, we wanna, we wanna query websites like we were doing before, and then you ask, okay, well, is there any way to like go through this section and be like, hey, we only wanna use certain, um, you know, relations, stuff like that. Well, I feel like this actually would have been a better place for them to implement that relation thing through Jet Engine, but they didn't. Do it through here. They did it through this, you know, this other way, the type of the post. So I don't understand how to do that that way either. I think the only way to actually do this currently is to go to Jet Engine Query Builder, use that as the type, and then we're gonna then we're gonna use one of our queries, which we'll, which we'll build here right now, and that is the way that we're gonna end up actually doing this. So we need to create a Jet Engine query via the Jet Engine Query Builder, which if we go over to our dashboard and we go to Query Builder, we're gonna say we're gonna create a query called We'll say we'll just say websites associated with current user. Just something that like you you'll know immediately what you're talking about as soon as you as soon as you see that. We are querying websites. Okay. Um, we can order them, just we'll order them by title and we'll order them lowest to highest. Just ABC. We'll add this query. We'll go back over. We're not done there yet, but we will refresh this real quick. And we will set it up just so. Uh, now, since we have it, we're going to go down, down. Can we get some of this stuff open there? Thank you. And then we're going to go right here, and we're going to say website associated. You can name it whatever you want, but websites associated with current user. Cool. Let's go back to our query builder. Now we have, again, websites. We have our we have our ordering. What we are querying here is when it's not a meta query. It's not a tax query. It's a relationship query. We need to go into post in, and we need to say related items, whatever that is, related items, and then we need to say from our relation. So we, in, in this case, we're talking about websites to users. Website is the parent, users is the child. What do we want to show in this set, in this sense? We want to show the parent object, which is websites. And where do we want to get that? We want to get it from the current user ID. So if we click apply there, we click update query, we come back over here, we press refresh. Now we have website one and two. Now you're probably thinking, okay, Mark, is that actually working? Or are you just, is it just somehow like showing up there? Well, a little tip that I would say is you could open an incognito window and you know uh, log into another user and all that sort of stuff. The other option is you can download this plugin called User Switching, which we do not have on here yet, so we'll download it real quick. Lightweight plugin. I would not recommend having it on all the time necessarily, um, but uh, it is a nice little thing whenever you need uh, when you need to just do things like this and you're just testing around. Um, is very easy to use. And it's got 200,000 active installations, so they gotta be doing something right. So, all right, so if we go to user switching now, and we go down to our users, for instance, and what I wanna, I wanna show you something before we switch. So we have our main user, this is my, you know, my admin user, we can go to client or we can go to support. Before we click this switch to button, which is what that plugin just gave us, I wanna, sh I wanna double check, right? So if we scroll down, we saw earlier that my account is associated with website uh, one and two. This one is only associated with website one. So if we do this and we go to that websites page and we're logged into this other, you know, we're logged into, uh, what is this one? Hello. If we log into this one and we press switch to and we go to the websites page and we only see website one, you can pretty much guarantee that we're doing this right. Don't worry about this stuff. We'll handle all this at, at a later time here. But if we go to websites, boom, that's it. So what do we do here, just to kind of recap, because this is a very crucial part of this whole situation. We are querying based off of the current user. The way we're doing that in this case, and again, maybe there's a way to do it directly natively in Bricks, but I already have Jet Engine, we already built the stuff 
it, you're gonna, if you're using Jet Engine, you already have the Query Builder thing, so you might as well use it this way because it was three clicks and it was done. What we're doing is we have on the bottom here. This is like just a query of all of our uh, of our um, admin websites, which I'll show you another thing here too to get rid of all these. But in order to do this, we just created one query. We queried websites. We ordered it obviously just for whatever, and then it was the post it was the uh, post and page section of jet engine post in and we're using related items and we're just saying the relation that we have there which is websites to users in our case we're using the we want to display the parent which is websites and we want to compare it based off of the the uh, current user id so it's really not that complex once you kind of get it down um and it's awesome because now every time you know whoever xyz logs in here they're going to see just that specific, uh, the specific websites that are associated with them. Now, while we're here, uh, I'll just show you one more thing so we can have this kind of set up is if we go back to, um, let's go to this, let's get rid of our website too. We got a lot of stuff open here. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Here's one thing, we'll, one extra thing that we'll do is let me take over here. If we go to website card again, right? One nice thing about Jet Engine, actually, I think they just released this in a, in a very recent uh, update here, is if you go back to the query, you have no results. You can do a template. I'm not going to do a template for right now because um, uh, uh, you could create something and like put it in this place, but we'll just for right now, we're just going to use some text. So I'm going to say you don't have any websites yet or something like that. And then we go like this, we'll press save, we'll come back over to users, and what we'll do is we'll go back to our, our client that we were just on, and we will, what I'll do from, just from right here, this is another thing too, like these these little relation things are in both sections, they're in parent, they're in the parent and the child, so they're in website and users. We're on the users thing right now, I'm just gonna disconnect it. So now I'm no longer associated with that, that website. This user is no longer associated with that website that we just saw. So if we go to this again, if we go back and we switch we switch to them, and we come back in here and we do this whole thing where we go to websites because I don't have any navigation built into this yet. Now you don't have any websites, see? So this is the exact same thing that we just saw, but now they don't have any and they, you know, and they just see this. So I just, I just love the, the simplicity and the, and the straightforwardness of that. Let's, let's do something else now. Now you're seeing a problem though. Let's just tackle the problems one at a time. This, albeit, you know, a very bad design right now is a, is a user logged in, right? Is one of your clients that are logged in right now. If you showed them this, uh, for, again, forget about the styling, but there's a problem here because fundamentally the top portion is this is the sites that they own or they are associated with, which again, if they were associated, with, they would show up right now. If they weren't, they should get this. That's, that's perfect. The bottom portion, however, and you don't need to have this bottom portion. I just like it because it's kind of an interesting, um, it's an, it's a, it's an interesting way for me to go and get like a, the perspective of the client, uh, or like all of my clients in a way from the front end. And, um, and we're gonna easily do this with conditions. So the problem here though is your client is logged in, but they can see everybody else's websites that they're not associated with. We can't obviously have that. So what are we gonna do there? Well, we're gonna set a condition on this section down here. So if we come down and like we, like we said, we duplicated these sections. If I go to this section now, this is the admin view, and we come up to conditions and we say conditions, and we say condition is user role, and we say we're only showing it if the user role is administrator you could also put in other ones if you wanted to if you had edit, if you had editors authors shop managers whatever whatever the hell you want but in my case I'm administrator I'm the only the only people I want to see the one is that I want to have access to this and see this on that website's page are administrators so that's what we're gonna do there and we'll go back one more time to our our switching here and we'll say websites again and Bada bang, bada boom, that section is gone because this is a customer or possibly a subscriber, but they're definitely not an administrator and they don't see that stuff under there. And actually, I'm, I'm really curious about this. Uh, I don't think they see anything. I don't think they're even, I, I wanted to double check to see if they, uh, let me pop this guy out here. Is there any, I'm, I'm almost certain, right, that there's nothing There's nothing in here. Don't quote me on that, but uh, they definitely at least can't see it, and I'm pretty sure it doesn't even load. I have to double check if conditions actually load the stuff anywhere. I don't, I don't think they would. So my point is, again, mileage may vary on how effective that is. If you want to do it separately, put it on a different admin page or whatever, but the point is that you can have it all kind of on that same page and uh, give the user a different experience depending on if they have 
if they have websites, if they don't have websites, or if there's an admin logging in and seeing all those different websites there. But again, not superbly complex, just a couple queries and a couple different um, settings as far as the conditions and everything like that. And I'll, I'll say it right now. The one thing I love about Bricks is that up until very recently, Elementor didn't have those conditions that were just built in there and were three clicks to make that happen. That's a huge, um, a huge piece. If you're still on Elementor, um, Dynamic uh, 000 was a great plugin that I really enjoyed using back then. Again, I don't know what their conditions are and everything like that now, but it's another one of the reasons I love Bricks because everything there is a lot baked in. Again, certain things I think uh, are still uh, are still uh, in the works, but loving it so far. And that was uh, that was pretty straightforward, guys. That wasn't that wasn't too bad, was it? Let's continue. I am really tired of being able to like switch and then not see any header or anything like that. So let us go tackle that next here. Let's work on uh, on trying to maybe build something similar to this. Just a welcome to your find a tech portal type thing. Uh, let's do that. All right, so let's go out and go back here. Let's go back to our bricks templates and John Doe's currently editing, lovely. Okay, there we go, get rid of that. And if we go to header and edit with bricks, so I already had like a, a default header um, kind of placed in there, but um, in this, but uh, you could just, if you add a new template and then go to uh, the same way that we did it before on the right hand side, if you click, if we just go header real quick, you would add a new one, you'd give it a name, you come over here, click header here, publish, edit with bricks, and that's what's gonna get you to this section here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna use this as the design here. So we need an image, we need some, we need a header, H1, and we need, uh, well, actually, it's a weird thing because this is a header, so that's probably not actually an H1. It's more of a, um, if, we, if we leave this in here the whole time, which is, I mean, sort of obnoxious to have it always kind of in there, but at the same time, it is what it is. So play around with uh, your header however you see fit, but I'm gonna add a heading. Of course, it's not putting in the right spot there. Let me put those into the actual container. Thank you, Bricks. All right, let's do image heading, and we could do the whole negative one ordering thing. Um, also, really the way that I like to do this, um, and I'm not sure if I have it set up on this website, which maybe we could do. Um, you know what, let's do that actually as well. I apologize for skipping around. What I will do real quick is I will add I will add some basic text in here. I will go like this. I will go heading, basic text, um, and what we'll do is we'll go like this. So I'm gonna show you a couple different things all at one time here. So we're gonna go logo, we're gonna go uh, I'll just call it subtext and we'll call it welcome text, something like that. And section will be header, oops, header. And we'll say this is um, uh, wrapper. What kind of wrapper is this? This is like, um, we'll say intro wrapper, I guess. All right, so what we're gonna do here is for our logo, we are going to use our option. So if we go to dynamic data and we scroll down to jet engine and somewhere in here it will say options. General details is the name of our options page, so logo. So that's our logo, cool. We have a couple different sizes there. Ultimately though, we can go to style and these aren't, these aren't completely bemmed out yet. So let's do another, um, before we go ahead and do that, let's do another container. So we have a container here. If we could get into the right spot, that would be fantastic. So then we'll say like um, nav uh, wrapper. Oops. And if we're trying to build the same other thing down here, right? If we're trying to build, like we, we kind of started this, right? And then if we're trying to build this, this is going to be I believe just like a, a block, okay? You can see my little Kevin Geary uh, video up here. Stop making common mistakes with the headers because we're gonna need to spread this out. This is actually all gonna be one big menu and we're gonna spread it out. So we're gonna use that uh, once we get there. That's our nav wrapper. And if we go block, 
we throw a block in there this is going to be like our actual like let's say like inner for our, for our nav i guess and then we need nav menu and do we want nestable um i don't think we need nestable we'll just try a regular nav menu for now cool all right so then we'll have nav menu and that nav will, will be uh that should be all we need as far as the um the uh, sections here and everything like that. So let's just go ahead and do that. We'll bim that out. Cool, great. What I wanted to do with the logo here earlier was I wanted to select it. I wanted to say negative one, and then that would put it in the in the DOM. It would put it. Uh, it wouldn't change it in the DOM, but like so, the heading thing would be first. But the logo is is actually uh, the first item that comes up there. Um, if we go max width, max width of uh, I don't know, like extra small, I guess, as a start, just trying to keep it um, something there. We could do a calc to make that cleaner and nicer. Uh, our intro, our welcome text could be, we'll just copy it from over here for now. Welcome to client portal. Oops, there's too many tabs open. Absolutely too many tabs open. Cool, and then down here, we'll say, use this to manage your account. Cool. And then for intro wrapper, if we go center, no, and this one, always forget, always hit the wrong one there. Cool. All right, we're getting somewhere. This is nice. Uh, and then nav wrapper. Okay, so our inner and our nav wrapper. Now, um, for our header, I think maybe it is a section, but I think normally we go, uh, could, could go div and then do that but just just for the time being let's just keep it just keep it spaced out because that's not super important right now let's do um let's do this nav menu because i think this is is kind of important to uh to get this put together so menu and i'm assuming there's nothing really in the menu so let's go over to it okay cool now let's see what we have here now probably not going to have everything created but let's do dashboard as a page so we will go dashboard and we'll put that at our top here, we will do. We don't. We're not really going to need login. I mean, that's no reason to have login because this is the going to be the header on the uh, interior of the website and everything. Um, if we do websites, so if we go down to websites and we say view all, then it's going to give us our slug for our archive. We can throw that in there. Uh, orders. Um, we haven't done too much with WooCommerce yet, but if we do orders and we want to do add, cool. Now there's also subscriptions, which we don't have yet because we don't have the subscriptions, WooCommerce subscriptions plugin uh, built yet, but that'll be in there as well. And then we have account, which we have a drop down profile, billing address, and payment methods. Um, so if we go to account details, believe that's going to be our one that we want but we're going to change that to a different thing here we'll just go account for now now i want to reload this real quick so we're going to go back we're going to save this and what we're doing here is we need to set this theme style or not the theme style rather the, the template settings and say conditions and we need to add that condition now we're going to say entire website for now, but that's going to mess our front end up because we're we're actually going to need we're actually going to need to say like exclude certain pages and really only show this when people are logged in. And and honestly, the default templates are enabled here, so we'll probably uh, get rid of that. But let's just try uh, entire site for a second, and let's go back over here. Okay, so now we have something going on here, but my point being is if you go to an incognito window and you say portal, now it's gonna show up even on your, your front end. So you're, you're not gonna want this. Uh, at least one thing that we can do to make that stop happening right now is we can say, um, we could say exclude or we could say add condition and we could say exclude these ones and we could say individual. And we could, this, isn't, this isn't necessarily ideal, but just for the time being, we can go log in create account, all of our public pages. And, um, you know, kind of even the problem is really the best way to do this is 
only show this to people that are logged in. And that's not really the way that that's not really the way that this this works because these are more like location like website location based. So one thing we could do is say entire website and then say header and then go to the conditions on the header and say conditions just like we did before uh, user logged in is logged in so only show when the user is logged in and that was the whole header section that we did that for so now if we go like this this one's gonna be good if we go to um, if we go back to an incognito window and we reload it's not gonna show up I think that's probably the most um, elegant solution at least for the time being so the, this header piece only shows up when when people are logged in cool all right, now the one thing that I'd love to do is I would love to go to the dashboard. Now we have some navigation, that's lovely. I would love to go to the dashboard and I want to, probably one of the last things that we do here, hello Kevin, um, I would like to grab this link and see if we're able to, see if we're able to somehow put this link into a menu item because I don't trust anything else to log out and send the um, send people where they need to go and I don't know if it's gonna work so let's try oh, I should have probably actually added that that would have been nice okay there we go log out this is our if you remember from one of the first, earlier videos this is this is one of our cool things about bricks where it lets you add I don't know if that's going to work, but it lets you, regardless, if it's on, if you're on a page and everything, it lets you add that. So we need to figure out a way to put, it doesn't look like it's going to let us put that little short code in there. We need to find out a way to put a good logout link into the, the uh, menu here. One thing we can try is we can try this uh, WooCommerce logout, but I don't think I'm going to like it because I don't think it's going to redirect us to the right spot. We don't want it, to, we don't want it to log out to, we don't want it to log out, we don't want it to log us out to a crappy spot so this one isn't going to do anything this one is going to be some weird stuff because then we're going to actually get logged out and okay that is super exciting because i didn't think that was going to happen all right well that's good enough for me then i guess that works cool all right we'll use the woocommerce one for now if you're not using woocommerce you might have to look for something different but um my customer logout there's got to be a different way to kind of set that up, but for the time being, that's a simple and easy solution for us. So we will just uh, save that menu, and we'll refresh over here. Oops, I don't know what happened there. Uh, maybe I didn't click this. There we go. The link I followed expired. Damn. Reload. Cool. Okay. I think it was because we were doing that without, without refreshing. All right, refresh over here, cool. This is our link, awesome. Good enough for me for now. Uh, we don't have all the pages created, so we're just trying to get this done. In the interest of keeping these videos short, I'm gonna end this one here, and we're just gonna continue to, to roll through this as we go forward, but um, one thing that I wanna leave you with is the concept that we're gonna talk about next video is, do you want, how do you wanna structure this? And again, I'll, I'll give you some insight next time we do, uh, you know, in the next video here, which will be right linked below in the playlist, but, when you go to websites, do you want them to be able to see a big list of their websites like this? Or do you want them to have a single, like websites to have a single where they can click into like, click more to see about this website. And then there's a page that's slash, you know, company one or whatever, or whatever the website name is, website one. And then they can interact with it more there. Because the reason I'm, you have to think about that is with the projects in, you know, for instance, the other uh, portal, uh, the legacy portal here now, is that I didn't have a website single. I didn't have like if Find It Tech was a was a website they were working on. I didn't have a slash Find It Tech or whatever where they can go to. I just had it just like this. So this is the extent of what they could see. And again, you can make this card more in depth, but that's that's all there was. So if you're doing that though, then you're putting like projects in here, completed projects, all that sort of stuff. And I think that over time that would definitely get very very full. There would be a ton of completed projects. There might be multiple active projects. There's documents. There's everything going on here. 
and I think it's probably better to have a website single. The one caveat I would say is that now we're getting into territory where everything that we've done here is easy. And what I mean by easy is we can be we can do it with like simple conditions just based off of, you know, querying and like only showing query things like that. The real issue though that you run into with this, and again, in the WordPress ecosystem, there's ways there's probably ways around it here, but we need to we need to make sure that we implement them if we do it certain ways is if these things are publicly queryable, like if we keep websites as publicly queryable where anybody technically could go to website slash find a tech on here, right? I mean, if we actually just did it, like we could we could go to, um, actually let's do an example real quick. Let's go here and let's say if we go to, um, I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm talking about on the new situation here, right? If we are, or on the back end, so obviously we have access to everything, but if we go to websites, and then we go to website one. Now let's say that we're the owner of website two and we're not the owner of website one. Hypothetically, this this page right here, it's not publicly accessible, but it is access, it's not because you can't log in. If you're, if you're not logged in, you can't get to this permalink. But if you are a, if you are a, 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 a logged in user, you could get to it. That's not ideal. You do not want client A to be able to see client B's stuff. So my point is that we need almost this, this goes for so many different things. It goes for the documents, it goes for the websites, it goes for the projects, the tasks. There's gotta be a way to restrict all of those pieces of content specifically to the people that it's associated with or the website that it's associated with and things like that. That is something that we're gonna have to tackle depending on how deep we wanna go. If we get rid of the publicly queryable, then this wouldn't even be a page and it wouldn't be as big of a deal. But if you do want like a whole website page, then it's gonna matter. Um, it might not matter as much for projects may matter for projects, probably won't matter with tasks and things because you're not going to have your own um, single for those. But with websites and things, we're going to have to tackle that. So it's just something to be thinking about. And again, you can make your, your life easier or you can make your life harder. Um, it just depends on what exactly you're trying to get out of uh, this client portal. So other than that, though, I'm going to end this one here. Like I said, I don't want to keep making these ones extremely long. We, we, did, we tackled some things here, so definitely some food for thought. Go ahead and play around with it on your end and uh, see what you can do with those uh, conditions and everything like that and the queries. And uh, I will talk to you guys in the next one.